Hey, what is going on, you barnacles for brains, Barboach? Today, I'm coming at you with my updated Raging Bolt in the Shrouded Fable format. But with this list specifically, I'm not trying to make the best build of Raging Bolt, although this could be the best build of Raging Bolt. I was just trying to put as many cards that are good from Shrouded Fable into this deck as possible and build it around those cards. Before we jump into it and I break down what I'm playing and why I'm playing what I'm playing, big shout out to TC Evolution as always for sponsoring me, all the content I make here on the YouTube channel and as a competitor in the Pokemon TCG. They got the highest quality Pokemon TCG accessories out there. V-Star markers, ability markers, dice, damage cameras, you name it, they got it. They also have magic products. So if you're into Magic the Gathering, definitely go check them out for that as well. TCEvolutions.com, link will be in the description and you can use code AzulGG to get yourself a discount over there as well. So, Raging Bolt, we all know it. Some of us love it, some of us don't. Uh, it's really hard with the Bellowing Thunder attacks. I got four Raging Bolt in here, four Ogre Pond as well, of course. And this makes a little bit more sense when we go through the rest of the combination of cards that we got in here. I don't play Ultra Ball is one thing that stands out. So we are, I would say, lacking a little bit on Pokemon Search, but let's break down Night Stretcher in this deck. So that's like the purpose of this build was to try and just put as many cards that seem good in this deck from Shroud of Fable as possible and build it around that. So Night Stretcher puts a Pokemon or energy card from our discard pile into our hand so getting energy into our discard pile is not too difficult once we start attacking with raging bolt it discards energy to be able to do damage so once we start attacking with the bellowing thunder we can use night stretcher to recover energy to draw with ogre pond to draw with radiant greninja to attach return you name it it does it but how can we try and make this as useful to recovering pokemon or just getting pokemon into play for us so we can set up more raging bolts or attack with ogre pond or whatever it might be and we're going to do that through Pokestop. Pokestop discards the top three cards of our deck. We get any item cards we find that we discard the other cards. So we can discard Pokemon with it, energy with it. We can get items with it. And then Night Stretcher can recover energy or Pokemon that is discarded through the Pokestop. So there's a nice combination here with the four Night Stretcher and the four Pokestop to help us mill aggressively through our deck, but not overextend our resources too aggressively because Night Stretcher will always be able to recover whatever Pokestop doesn't hit. Of course, besides supporters, supporters are the cards that are kind of being left out here, but we do play a Pal Pad to aggressively recover our supporters. So that's the combo I'm going for here. Night Stretcher, Pokestop, Combination, and so far it's felt really, really good to be honest. Um, I did initially start off with a four Poke Gear build, but now I've scaled it back a little bit to four Trekking Shoes, and that has honestly felt better. Trekking Shoes lowers our odds of finding Sada, but finding Sada isn't the only thing we need to do. We also need to find the Pokemon, we need to find the Energy, we need to find Earthen Vessels. Trekking Shoes has the possibility of just getting us closer to all of those cards, whereas Poke Gear can really only hope that we can hit a Sada or an Iona or a boss's orders. Of course, we can hit any of the supporters for what the situation we need. But yeah, the Trekking Shoes actually has felt better for sure. So like I said, four Ogre Pond, four Raging Bolt, and playing the high counts of both of these, I mean, four Raging Bolt just always has made sense in the deck. I've seen some people play down to three Ogre Pond. I've tried it out myself as well, but we want the high counts because we actually want to mill these cards with Pokestop so then we can recover them with the Night Stretcher. We could go further than that and play like two Iron Bundle, two Squawkabilly, two Pheasantipity, but that starts to get a little bit situational the iron bundle in here comboed along the night stretcher is ridiculously powerful i just kind of love iron bundle it's just like so such a better card than i initially thought it was ridiculously powerful card i think this thing is probably pretty underrated overlooked in previous formats to be honest building up to the shrouded fable format i think this card is definitely underplayed and probably should have been played in more decks but yeah insanely powerful card the iron bundle absolutely love it and it combos super well with night stretcher we use it once and then we can immediately recover it next turn and use it again immediately don't have to super out it back to the deck and then go find it with a nest ball or hope to find it and then whiff and then we're like eh, this sucks got four night stretcher in here we can use hella iron bundles throughout a game Redding Greninja, of course in here as draw power squawkabilly for those slower opening hands we use squawk squawkabilly pretty often got the one prize attacker in here in the sandy shock still and then the new edition of the pheasantipity ex i don't have too much to say about this this card is broken with this deck specifically, though, it's a little bit more awkward than some other builds I've played the Pheasantipity in. Pheasantipity on board consistently in these decks where we have equal liabilities, like Ogre Pond, 210 HP. It's going to be on our, our bench, right? Two prize Pokemon. Pheasantipity is equal to the Ogre Pond. So having Pheasantipity in play alongside Ogre Pond just sounds broken because we're not adding more liabilities to our bench. The problem with this deck specifically is bench space. We usually want two ancient Pokemon in play pretty aggressively. So that way, if we get Ionoed, when we find Sada, we can get that extra energy and play on that ancient Pokemon. I may be playing a little bit too aggressively towards that line of play in my play so far. So maybe I need to adjust that to open up more bench space for Pheasantipity. Um, Greninja almost always wants to come into play. Such a powerful draw support Pokemon as the game progresses. And with all this energy recovery, the four retrieval, the night stretchers, like it's not hard to find an energy 
to be able to use concealed cards with. The big hang up here is definitely the squawk ability. The games we put squawk ability in, squawk ability in play it can be hard to find room for pheasantipity. When we end up not having to put squawk ability in play, it's a little bit easier, but I would much rather have like a second raging bolt on my bench than the pheasantipity on my bench. If I can get like an extra energy on the raging bolt, like if I can go instead of benching pheasantipity for the turn, bench raging bolt, solder to two raging bolts, have an energy or two energy pre set up on my bench raging bolt. That's like that many less cards I need to find next turn. Sure, Pheasantipity draws me three cards, which could get me all the cards I need to attack. But if I have the attacker already set up, that just makes way more sense. So the Pheasantipity is a little bit awkward in the Raging Bolt, to be honest. The bench space just doesn't work out all the time where we can put it into play. Sometimes you draw well enough to not have to use Radiant Greninja uh, or, this, or the Squawk Ability. And at the end of the game, of course, if we have double Raging Bolt in play, double Ogre Pond, Greninja, Squawk Ability, that's our six Pokemon. They knock out a Raging Bolt on that last turn to dig for game. We could bench the Pheasantipity that turn and gives us like a plus three draw. So it's still good for sure. Just not as great as in other decks. We can't really utilize the full power of the Pheasantipity, it feels like. Um, I said I was going to be quick on that one. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but fully explaining my thought process here. Four Sada, of course, two boss, one Iono. I haven't actually used the Iono yet at all with this build, but I'm still holding out on it. Having at least one hand disruption card never feels like a terrible thing. So I'm still holding out on the Iono being worth the inclusion. I guess I played it like on turn one sometimes going second. We should be going second with this deck as well. If you're playing this deck on ladder, blind pick second 100% of the time. We have the usual suspects, the four vessel, the four retrieval, of course. I already talked about the night treasure, four nest ball, no ultra ball. We're trying to get our combination of the Pokestop, the Night Stretcher, and the Trek and Shoes to like dig through our deck to find our basic Pokemon a little bit more so, but also the possibility of finding everything else. For Shoes, like I mentioned, two Switch Cart and the Prime Catcher for our Switch cards. And the, of course, the Gust of Prime Catcher and aggressive decks like this is just so broken. How can we not? I don't think we can not. And yeah, the two Switch Cart definitely needs some kind of Switch Cards for those early game scenarios to get into those big turn one knockouts. And two Switch Cart plus the Prime Catcher feels pretty comfortable for that. Uh, we are really aggressive on the Pokestop, so we've got the Pal Pad to recover our supporters. And then the Poke Gear in here as well has been really, really nice. It gives a little bit of extra extend towards the, the, the Sada, the Iono, the boss. And also, as we draw into this throughout the game, it can be kind of like a cool combo card towards the end of the game. If we can preserve our Poke Gear, it means we can like late game Pokestop into it. Or once we find Pal Pad, we can go Pal Pad plus Poke Gear and like guarantee to find a supporter. So even though it's just a one of, I would like to be at a little bit of a higher count of it. I did start off, I think, like I mentioned, with four Poke Gear, no Trekking Shoes, but I've worked my way around to four Trekking Shoes, one Poke Gear. But I would like to up the Poke Gear count maybe by one or two if possible. I haven't found the room yet. For the energy count, I don't think we can go lower than three Lightning or three Fighting. It's too important for the possibility of being able to build up two energy on uh, potentially two Raging Bolts or build up two on the active and leave like two on the bench. Build up two on the active to attack and maybe discard some off the active Raging Bolt, but then being able to build up some on the bench. So if we played like two Fighting, two Lightning, prizing a Lightning or a Fighting while we would still be able to attack for our turn would be too detrimental. I brought it down to six Grass, which with four Night Stretcher and four Retrieval has felt fine. I would potentially maybe want to experiment with four Grass energy. That sounds a little bit low, we often are able to build up a ton of energy on our Ogre Ponds, and we would like the ability to, you know, to have like two on each if we can like leave it like that. So yeah, I'm not sure about going down to less than five grass energy. Five's felt comfortable though. I haven't felt like, ooh, I need that six. This felt like, okay, this is fine. So I could see trying out four, but I think after trying out four, I would be like, ooh, I need to go back to, I need to go back to five. All right, that's it. That's my take on Raging Bolt. Trying to maximize Shrouded Fable cards, four stretcher, Pheasant Dippity. Let's jump into some action and I'll show y'all how to make a run. Ooh, it's Lugia though. Close, close. Depends how many rats they got. How many rats you got? Are they ratted up like that? They're cooking over there. All right, all right. Bundle. So this is a bundle turn one dub here for sure. No, I think it's correct, actually. All right, let's see what this can do. Start. Need more, though. Bad follow-up. Actually, no, it's terrible. I got rid of, getting rid of a grass energy there was like, didn't really do anything anyways. Wait, how do I possibly ever do this now? I can't. I don't have a play. I can't. Fudge. Um, I can't further anything here now. I don't have a way to do it. I need to mill an energy. Um, I 
don't even know how I want to play this now. I was feeling confident to begin with, but now I'm feeling not very confident. Um... It's something. <laughs> it's something. Uh, I don't know if I prize the fighting or lightning. I think I prize one of them though. All right. It's gonna be a little bit more awkward now. I'm okay with retreating to Raging Bolt here, right? I think so. I think no, actually. I just want to dig deeper for other stuff. I want energy. Yeah, I think that's correct. That feels really bad to do, but I want to draw more cards. Okay. I'll get a pawn. I could get Billy here. I don't want Billy here, though. You get a pawn and a raging bolt. I don't want to roar right now. Well, I could have roared, but I would lose a Sada. Losing a Sada there feels really, really bad. It's gonna be tough to win the price right now. We needed that. I feel like if we, <sighs> well, there's two Luminian in play. That's good. Can we get the first two prizes? That was the question. I don't know. Oh, they can shuffle one back this turn, though. They can they can shuffle one of their Luminians back this turn. But then I can go chase an Archeops, I guess. Um, all right, we'll see what we'll see what happens here. We'll see what happens here. I, I could go after an Archeops now. I can still establish quite a few energy and play this turn, though. Even if they're going to shuffle the Luminian back to the deck, they can still establish quite a few energy and play here. Was the Zork tech and Drago actually real? I mean, it was in their deck. You'll appreciate the 34 months there, Nuxum. Man, Whiffing Turn 1 attack with this deck just sucks. <laughs> we were pretty close to it, though, still. If we just, like, milled an energy off Pokestop or hit a... Vessel, I guess. Goldfish on board. Okay, that's they're only gonna be able to establish a double turbo and a gift over here or something. Then that's that's not that much. Then we can chase a chops, we can go chops chasing. Dude, I just I can't even explain how bad this is. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, they didn't have anything else to send up. This is still so terrible. This is still so terrible. Can I get the punish though? Can I get the punish? This first. Lightning grass. Then I could boss. Okay. I do be wanting to use concealed cards though. Well, we can maybe get there as well still. We'll see. Yes. What happens if I KO this? If I go KO Lugia for two prize cards, they can do 120 with this, or they could go load up Ursa Luna, knock out Bench. Load up Ursa oh, They'd really want me to trigger this gift energy. I'm almost wondering, like, do they just not have another attacker to work with? If they can find Ursaluna, I'm in trouble. If they can find Ursaluna, I'm in trouble. I'm leaning towards the Chops KO still. I definitely can't one of these two. If they find Ursaluna, I'm in trouble. They can find they could go Iron Hands, boss. Oh, interesting. Um They also could have hit me for 120, so they could have actually KO'd me with Iron Hands, but then they did the double turbo energy for no reason. KO the Lugia, get two prize cards. No attackers in play, they get attacked. I think I go... Mm, they don't got it, they don't got it. Are they living off gift? I'm gonna kill the chops here, I'm gonna kill the chops. Yeah, the question is, are they living off gift? I'm not sure if they are or not. I should have benched this other Raging Ball probably, because the knockout is always here. Yeah, the question is, are they living off gift? I don't know if they are. 
But the thing is as well, if they want to attack with this Lugia this turn, they have to put a double turbo on it. If they put a double turbo on this, they can't KO Ogre Pawns anymore. So if I just go KO this, I just win the game. If I get the KO on this this turn, the game is over. Because they can't quad they can't quad uh non double turbo this this Lugia anymore. So I just have to get it has to be Prime Catcher now for me though, which is Oh, I'm at a boss. Ooh. I mean, if I get the Prime Catcher KO on this, I'm feeling pretty good, though. But if not, KO the active is still fine, though, right? Because then they have no attacker set up. But then they're in Ursa Luna range, though. Hmm. And they're in Ursa Luna range. Then I KO Ursa Luna. And they can't KO with, like, anything else. But yeah, if I KO this this turn, then I'm feeling really, really good. But it comes down to the Prime. I need to find the Prime. Where's, where is my Prime? I've shuffled my deck up to this point, though, so it's just random. Okay, they did have something as well. They didn't put a gift on here? Are they out of gift? Are they trolling? All right, so if I draw two, go down to three. If they get Ursa Luna right now, put it on the bench. They can't attach to it. Minus three, they could go double turbo, boss KO Ogre Pond. So I could KO the Ursa Luna right now if they bench it. If they don't bench it, then I just go after the chops, obviously. They're baiting you to KO Lugia. Another, well, I can't tell if that's an actual, if you're, that's a serious comment or not. I think you actually might be trolling me. Bluffing for real, for real. <laughs> they are a rat enjoyer here. All right, so yeah, if I get the KO on this, the game is just over. I should have probably benched this last turn to be honest, because like their their obvious knockout had to be my active. So knowing that, I want two ancients in play. I'll just deal with the chops. I forgot to include in my deck. That's on me though. That's on me. K in the active, like I said, is still it's not bad. I don't actually know. I think I prized a fighting. This is a triple Ogre Pond game, right? To just get as much as possible. Oh. Well, I don't want any of those. Yeah, Prime is in there. What's left in here? Some grass. I want to thin the deck out as well. Oh, I was kind of like waving it around. <laughs> I shouldn't need Switch Cart moving forward, right? I don't think so. I need a lightning for the actives. Or no, no, no. I need a fighting for the bench. I'm using prime. Right, I think I just concealed cards first on the grass. Or maybe I actually should have played. No, I shouldn't have done that. Let me use this as well. I'm going to try and I really want to get this. Now I don't get the, how should I have sequenced that actually? I sequenced that incorrectly. I definitely sequenced it incorrectly, but I don't know how I should have sequenced it. See, now I'm like drawing into all this energy. I don't have any grass energy. Grass me. Or give me the prime. Prime. Grass. All right, now I got there. Well, no, no, no. I have one more I could use, but hey, we could get there. So I could either draw the prime or another grass energy. No, you bitch. All right. K1 act. No, I have to kill the active here. I have to kill the active here. So I have equal fighting and lightning left. So there's a fighting in the discard pile. Put a lightning in the discard pile. I can get rid of lightning, triple grass, I guess. I want to bench. No, no, no. Do I, I might want the option of iron bundle. So I'm gonna go lightning, triple grass here. Lightning. Oops. Ooh, that would have been so bad. I was like, I'm done with this Pokemon. That means I'm done with every Pokemon. See, the problem with this situation is they can Ursa Luna me. But maybe that doesn't matter. If they Ursa Luna me now, this is where I actually want Iono, to be honest. But it's probably gone, right? Yeah. Mm hmm.
We got so close to getting there. And I, I did miss sequence, so I should have probably ended up with a little bit higher odds of uh I probably should end up with like slightly higher odds of actually being able to pull to get to the, the third ogre pawn use. <clears throat> so what they can do is they can go Ursaluna. Man, we can still lose this. Yeah, they can go Ursaluna knockout. And then Or they can go rat knockout into Ursaluna knockout. Oof. Nothing I can do about that. Yeah, if they have rat, they could have rat KO and then Ursaluna KO. Man, they still might be able to pull this off. No way. No way. Bundle the chops was an option. No, if I use bundle there, they just push a blue mini in. This is not what we wanted. They don't have it. I think they have it. I'm pretty sure they have it. My assumption is they have it. If they don't got it, though, hey, it's pretty good. Luna priced could be. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. They could attack with Lumini in this turn. No, no, no. They can't attack with Lumini in this turn. If they do that, then I just Gus KO the Archaeops. Then we should be good. I just forgot to register for Worlds. Wait. Forgot to wait. You can't register for worlds anymore. Dude, now I gotta make sure I register for worlds. <laughs> Maybe panic. World championships. You forgot to register on RK9. After the eighth, in Japan you can't. Oh, it. it what? That sucks. But they are running away. But now I can go chase this, and then they have to chase this with this, or I could go KO this. And then they need a big rat. Hmm. Okay, so what's going to happen is if I go KO the chops, they need attach plus boss. If I KO this, they need evolve Archaeops for two energy boss. So I should probably KO the Chinchino, right? Oh, I got the switch cart. So switch cart plus KO this just wins me the game, basically. No, the switch card doesn't do it. No, the switch card does do it. I need to find the prime catcher. Ooh. No one say it. Don't say it. I will ban you. It's 140. Oh, the switch card went crazy. What the heck? If I didn't draw it there, though, I actually... Oh, wait, they can still legacy the... <gasps> no, we got to bundle them. We got to bundle on them, then. We got. We need to bundle twice, potentially. Holy smokes, this game is getting crazy, folks. Also, I'm, like, running out of energy and... <laughs> wait, okay, no, this is fine. Okay. It's actually all kinds of crazy. All right. Let's get rid of fighting. 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 No, 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 no. Put that one. No, no, no. Put that one back. No, no, no. Put this one back. Get rid of the lightning. Done. Okay. Oh. I, mean, I got plenty of energy recovery. So now what can happen? <laughs> okay. I can't play Sada till next turn. If they go into Ursa Luna here, I can Sada. If they go into Ursaluna here, I can Sada. But otherwise, I can't Sada till the next turn. So I have to go Attach Lightning active. Bellowing Thunder, discard Fighting Lightning. I should have bench. No, no, no. I have to keep this around. I have to keep the bench race open. Because if they put Legacy on the active, I have to be able to go Iron Bundle Knockout. And then if they do it again, I have to be able to recover the Iron Bundle and then do it again. So you have to keep the bench race open. Wait, if they had brought up an... 
they brought up Ogre Pond, I lose. <laughs> I would have decked out if they had brought up Ogre Pond because I can't accelerate and then attach, attack. Chillin'. Shh, don't tell him that. Can you Ogre Pond with zero cards in deck? You can, right? Yes? Okay, cool. Dude, this game was actually... I can't believe they almost... Dude, Lugia's just broken, bro. I can't believe they almost brought this back. They actually would have won if they just... Ate, I think if they would have won if they just placed their energy better on that second turn. If they didn't do the gift to the Luminion. The gift to the Luminion on their end was so bad. Um... Yeah, the gift to Luminium was so bad. You had retrieval for energy retreat? Yeah, but I could retreat, but I couldn't attack. These both had one energy. And if I use Sada, I deck out and I lose. I would have literally just lost if my opponent had brought up Ogre Pond. Because I couldn't retreat and attack in the same turn. If I don't retreat and attack in the same turn without decking out, I lose. Because then I, they have just, I can't win on the next turn. That was actually crazy. All because we couldn't find the freaking card. The prime. <laughs> we had to dig so hard for prime whipped and then we still have to find it. Honestly, this build of this build feels pretty good. If you're just trying to play it as aggressive and straightforward as possible with no text, this build feels kind of good. I mean the night stretchers might be overkill. I don't really know to be honest, but it's the only cool new way you can build Raging Bolt. Like the only card we really gained was this, right? Did this gain anything else? It didn't, right? And also honestly, Night Stretcher, recover bundle, just bundle over and over again is just sick. It's broken. If they Iono KO, then we need to draw into the stuff. Oh, I guess Fizz and Dippity too. Dippity could be still good in here as well. Um, yeah, Dippity is a uh, be still pretty good. All right, this went all out for the dub. They're like, all right, you don't have it. We always have it. You fool. Yeah, this is... Luke is confirmed broken, bro. This game should not have been close. I don't know how this was so close. It should not have been this close. There's just no way. It's impossible. Absurd. They're just playing a broken deck. Can't beat this. It's a broken deck. All right, we'll see. Hold on. What are they cooking? Any thoughts on what you want to cook up this set? I've been cooking it up. We are cooking it up. Zorark Reggie Drago? Hold on. They might be cooking. That doesn't sound very good, but we'll see how it plays out for them. Is it better to discard both energies on the Bolt if you know they are, or they will KO it because it gives you an extra energy on an Ogre Pond for next turn in case you need it? Uh, theoretically, but if but if you think about the situation, you're like, well, if I discard both energy off my active, they're not going to KO my active, and they'll be able to not KO my active, and they probably won't KO my active, then maybe you should discard somewhere else. And then think about, just think about the outcome of what your opponent's going to do. It's not as simple as, just because they could KO your active, you should discard both off your active. It's like, well, now that you've discarded both off your active, how much do they care about your active? If they don't care about it at all, then you might need to entice them a little bit by leaving some energy. I say entice them, but it would like still be correct on their end. Um, at a certain point, once you leave enough energy on the active, it's probably correct for them to KO the active. So you just want to give yourself the most options for what they what what they could possibly do. Let's say your opponent could possibly um let's say your opponent could possibly do anything. KO anything on your board. Um if your opponent could possibly KO anything on your board, then you want to like try and ha leave as many options available to you as possible, making it as easy to do as many things possible next turn. Um, or there's some things you probably just don't care about them caring about, so you could remove stuff from that. So they still need the Drago. Oh, they got it. They got no Ogre Ponds yet, though. But in the situation you were in, there was no other Pokemon that your opponent could KO because the Bolt was the only thing that would damage on it, right? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at it. I mean, they could have, like, Iron Valiant did twice. They had a huge hand. Iron Valiant, Iron Valiant, Counter Catcher, Boss, whatever. It's just situational. The answer is just that it's situational. Situational. Noted, bait your opponent. No, don't bait your opponent. Don't bait your opponent.
You want to play around like what your opponent can do and what they're likely to do. It's like a, it's like a you play around a mix of both of those, what they can do and what they're likely to do. And it, ideally, you play around literally everything if possible. But that's usually the hardest thing to be able to do is to literally play around everything. So I mean, that doesn't help me unless I get an Iono. I should have taken another grass there, probably. See, this is so weird for me to commit all of this. And then what if I just draw into a Squawkabilly? Like, I feel so bad. <laughs> okay. Conceal some cards. See, this is a Billy angle. All right, let's check this. What does it give me? It's a Billy angle, folks. Unbillyable. Don't let me down, Billy. Don't let me down. I'll punch you. Grass, lightning. So I need this thing to get me a... Asada. We have the counter catcher, or the prime catcher, excuse me. It's not Asada, bro. What are you doing? All right. Um, Bench, attach, pack. Oh, no. Bench, attach. Run to... Greninja. And your go. Unlucky, bro. That's why I always say I'm the unluckiest Pokemon TCG player in the history of unlucky Pokemon TCG players. Because it's true. Cap? No, no cap, no cap. Oh, shoot. The frog shutdown card. My frog has been dismantled. Oh, losing my prime kind of sucks, but we play iron bundle, so it's like not that big of a deal. Okay, hey, I, all right, I like what I'm, I like what I see here. I like what I see. Now this is cooking. I gotta find iron bundle first. I gotta find the iron bundle first. The bundle is key here. Key, essential. I might actually just sort of for to one here. We might have to just go Sada to one to try and find it. It's just too important to pull off. Oof. Only two prizes in play. You'd love to see it. I'm mean, not going to push Billy on me, but it's fine. Anything else? Anything less? Anything more? Bundle. Can't keep up on that. Bundle! I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to go with bundle. Can we get can we get a bundle? Ooh, is that a is it prized? Got him. They thought they could hide. They thought they could hide by this this pathetic. Honestly, retire. Would have been embarrassing if I had misclicked there. Oh, I haven't concealed cards yet. Honestly, I don't really want to though. I don't want to run out of energy to using concealed cards. Like our current flow and tempo of the game is like fine. They don't really usually play ways to bump stadiums. I gotta be careful about, I mean, hitting, uh, honestly hitting the switch card here would have been nice. But it's the same thing as losing energy now. All right, so we're gonna go knockout here. I think I'm gonna get rid of the two off the active here. I'm gonna go like. I just wanna avoid. I'm trying to avoid. What am I trying to avoid? I'm trying to like maximize my energy retention in play. That's what we're trying to maximize. I burned through a lot of resources. I maybe like overestimating how many resources I burned through to, and what I need to be able to close out this game, to be honest. I might be overestimating that a little bit here. That Zorak's hitting though. The Zorak is hitting this turn. But. Bundle number two is on the way. And if we need it, actually, we can get bundle number three. <laughs> and we have Prime Catcher. And we have Prime Catcher. I'm feeling pretty good. 
Oh shoot. They're cooking. They're cook they're scheming it. Will they get there? I kind of want them to get there to be honest. Let's have a let's have a let's have a game here. No, you killed him. Sorry, hold up. They got an ball for Pheasant Dippity, and then they can super rod him back. They can still do this. They, I believe in them. I believe. I want them to do it here. <laughs> I want them to pull the playoff. You got this. You got this. Drawing one off Ogre Pond. Oh, they have both Ogre Ponds to use here, actually, I think. They didn't get back the Radzar, did they? Oh, they did. Okay. They have a ton of hits they could get here. Give it to them. Yes! Let's go. Just don't Iono me. Don't Iono me. Yes. Yes. More iron bundle action. What I'm here for. Another one? Oh, that makes sense. No Iono. Ooh. Damn. They're, like over there, they're over there like, oh my gosh, I'm cooking out here. I'm about to bundle them again. <laughs> it's a free dub. Free dub. I just want to use bundle more. That's all I want. That's what I'm trying to get out of this. More bundle action. What does this orc do? 60 times 60 plus 60? 60 times EXs and Vs in play. Ooh, I could actually Iono them this turn. That honestly might be the play. To Iono them before they can Iono me. That usually is the play. I also wouldn't mind just sodding and setting up more. Uh, how do we do this? How do we approach this? Because Sada would allow me to win through boss. Ole. There's zero energy left. They have V-Star still. True. So probably just getting more set up on my end makes the most sense. Um, I think it's correct. I don't know if it really matters, to be honest. Uh, I'm just gonna hit the poke stop here. I don't know if it, well, I don't know what's correct here to be honest. Time for later. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Oh, I had these left too. So got some dances to teal. it up <laughs> Dude, we're just going don't say it i i know one of you is thinking it don't say it i'll ban you um what is left in the deck though okay Get rid of this So should I just get rid of three grass here? Or I could get rid of like... They still have prime left though as well, right? I'm thinking I need to win through a gust. So I'm thinking I just get rid of like grass, 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 right? That feels like the best to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> That feels correct. I don't know if that's correct, though, to be honest. Maybe should have taken... Because I, I could have taken one off the raging, active Raging Bolt, maybe. Um, I don't know. Because this allows me to just win with boss. Like, if I just draw a boss, I win. The game's over. Um, so, I'm not sure. 
Now the, now you're playing around. Okay, now you learned. You learned. Do got double bundled and was like, all right, fuck this. I've learned. Now I need to get boss or prime. I do win off just a boss here. I do win off just a boss. See, like this is another situation where I just like I have no bench space for Dippity. Although I think there's a decent amount of board states where Greninja doesn't need to come into play, to be honest. But like this guy comes in play pretty often. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I've like used this every single game. Maybe I should be playing to Squawk, to be honest. Um The thing is, like, always when this gets knocked out, if I have Dippity in the deck, I send this up, and then I could get Dippity. So Dippity is like still like bonus draw at the end of the game. Um there, there's the Iono. Oh boy. Will we get there? Yep. <laughs> I don't know if this is blasting with Dippity over Squawk. Well, it's not that simple. We never cut Squawk from the deck, right? Like, um, yeah, we never cut Squawk from the deck, but um, we have Academy at night in this deck. No. I'm surprised your opponent played this game out. That was yeah, they were around for a while, but Charizard can make pretty big comebacks in that matchup. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I wouldn't have been surprised if they've been able to like start to bring things together. I think Dewey is worth the tech space. <laughs> Dewey's pretty powerful right now. Hmm, that kind of sucks. I was hoping for a raging ball so I could use switch card into it, but now we just Billy, right? Put bundle down just in case. Just cuz. All right, bundling. So they're they're probably playing Ursaluna, right? It's gotta be Ursaluna. Squawk. No, we just do attach active, right? Because I need to attach to the. Yeah, we just squawk. We just squawk. This first, I think, is correct, right? Yeah. As well for another one. And then we go into the shoes. Shoe number one. Oop. That guy's trash. We have to. I should say no, so I discard it, so I draw a card. Ooh, and then I can just recover it. I draw another one. So I, I can't even do it anymore, though, right? Because I can't get lightning and switch. Yeah, so we just whiff. I don't really want to play the Palpite yet. I think we're trying. Well, it would get back a Sada and a boss. Are they ever Iono in me next turn? I don't think so. They're probably playing a pretty aggressive deck, right? This could be tough, though. We might just lose. Th this matchup seems bad for us. We'll see, though. The, when I played this deck the other day, it didn't seem very good. But, well, actually, I don't even know what they're playing for sure, to be honest. Yeah. Have I tried Roaring Moon with Janine yet? No, but it, there's no way Roaring Moon's better with Janine than Sada. Sada's 100% better. You maybe would play... You could possibly play, like, four Sada and a Janine, though. That could be a thing. What, in your opinion, is the best draw engine? That's, like, not a thing. Like, it's deck-dependent. Like an Arceus deck with Squovet and two B barrel setups that feels insane, but yeah, that feels really good for that deck. But uh oh wait, but getting an attachment for turn was actually a big deal, so I could retreat this Greninja. Mm, I didn't really think about that to be honest. But Pidgeot feels really good in Charizard. There's like no best draw engine. It's just deck dependent. Like if you said B barrel is the best draw engine, you're not gonna try and force B barrel into like a turbo roaring moon deck. I got this thing down with just one energy. What happens if I bonk this? Well, maybe they don't care if I bonk it, though, as long as they attach to it. Yeah. So our goal this turn is... If I go KO two prize, I guess I could just go two prize. I could knock out two prize or knock out two prize or knock out, though, right? I could, yeah. Okay, I don't even know how I want to approach this turn, though. Oh, that was a really good draw. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. Get rid of this. Sure. Lighting fighting. No lighting grass. Sure. Yo, appreciate the 10 gifted there, the legend. Hold up. Let me secret to this turn. I'll thank all the new rats of the pack. Okay, we can go KO2 Prizer, KO2 Prizer, KO2 Prizer here. Okay, okay. Shit. Don't work out. Lightning. Uh, putting that there seems fine, right? Because I can just retreat. So it's like, doesn't really matter. 
don't really want Iono. I might need a boss. I do want to play. Well, I can, I can do this first. In Mississippi. I have energy left in the deck, right? I got to have energy left in the deck. There's no way I don't. I could not, but I don't think that's true. Honestly, I'm leaning towards no, because I just want to go boss boss, right? I want to save that. Oh, I have the stretchers in here. I'm just going to give the Iona, though. Maybe I should have done that off the rip anyways. Maybe there was never, like, a worse card. Possible there was, like, never a worse card. All right, now we use this and rip it. Dude, we have no deck left. <laughs> There's just nothing left. No. I don't think so. I still would have harder treated here, I think. But actually, I'm not sure. I would have to, like, go back and play through that situation. All right, Bellowing Thunder. Well, it has to be four, so it's gotta be this grass, this lightning, this grass, like that, right? I could get rid of one off the active instead, but then if they gust KO this, I wanna be able to attach boss next turn. And then la on the last turn of the game, I need to be able to go sod up Prime Catcher. Okay, we're chilling, we're chilling. Yo, appreciate the 10 gifted there. The legend, welcome to the pack. DJ Buffy, JR Breaks, Later Magician, formerly known as Bladder Magician, TCG Knockout, Z Wells, T Rax, Quaza, <laughs> Dr. Croak, Mr. Mayhem, and Gutsy Wispy. Welcome all to the back. Welcome all to the pack. We're completely out of French toast, but we have plenty of uh, spring rolls. How many years did you uh, did you play for seniors, and how many years has masters? Zero in seniors. I played like half a season in seniors, if I remember correctly. Or I maybe played a full season in seniors then. No, I played like half a season in seniors. Yeah, I played like half a season in seniors, and then I became a master. Back in two thousand and nine, I played a little bit in seniors, and then I aged up to masters in twenty ten. What do you do with your world's promos? Uh, I usually just sell them. I forget if I sold last year's or not, though. Yeah, I did sell. I have London. I have the London ones. I just, I just hate. I just don't like having stuff, man. <laughs> How many years have I attended Worlds as a Masters? Uh, 2013 on. I just hate stuff, man. I hate stuff. I got Prime Catcher, so I feel like I should go Prime. No, no, no. Huh. Does that make sense? Should I boss now or Prime now? I should probably... I'm actually not sure. The booster boxes? The booster boxes is the one that I like that. I like my booster box collection. I think I should boss now, right? I think I should boss now. And then Prime Catcher next turn, I feel like. Focus stop, I guess. Probably just gonna get one of them back. We're just trying to thin out the deck as much as possible, basically. Oh wait, but I should have. Ooh, now I have this fighting energy in my hand, just not doing anything. I guess it's not. I guess it's not that big of a deal, though. We do this here. We probably go KO the Dippity, right? Because it reduces the odds of them disrupting my hand, if they even can. It also takes only three energy to KO the Dippity, I guess. Um. All right, we're utilizing our stretchers. This is good. That's what they're here for. Our deck is literally just all items. It is just so gross. <laughs> so in the last two cards of my deck, there's a, a Sada. There's a Sada right here. So I could play this, take the Sada, then pal pad a Sada. I have two Sada. I don't really need two Sada, but I want to draw into a Sada. Bench this thing. Boss the Dippity. 
I don't want people to ignore my active. Could I have burned this somehow? I could burn this in retreat, I guess. Okay. All right, bellowing thunder. I'm gonna get rid of one, two, three. I mean, they're always gonna kill my active here anyways, right? What do you think about iron leaves and vault like the Drago? Um, it's definitely not as good because it's just like not like vault gets doesn't get in as as awkward of situations as consistently. I feel like so it's definitely not as necessary for sure. You grade your world's top four card? No. Oh, they just got it back already. Oh, they have stretcher, yeah. Okay, that's not that's not a hand disruption card though. So we just win, right? We just win with prime. Wait. I, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> For a second, I was like, wait, can I even play this card? But we're chilling. We're chilling. Does Drago get anything good from this set? Reggie Drago? Yeah, you get Kiram. Haxorus is okay. What's my oldest booster box? Uh, Forbidden Light. Yeah, Forbidden Light. So it's not too old. Well, if I prime catcher this turn, though, if I had prime catcher this turn, I would have sought it as well. So I wouldn't have had that low of energy count in play. Oh, wait, shoot. I just sent this up. That's right. I have switch card, I guess. Tripping. Wait, no, I can just do this as well, though. Need that nest ball. Our deck was just all gas. For a second, when we started this match, I was like, oh, how do I ever win? But they just have so many two prizes in play. I can just ignore. <laughs> I can just ignore their their guy. I can ignore their, their Ursulun is the whole game. If I just get the first two prize knockout. 